Now I'm a true bowling man, you probably know that already if you're familiar with this channel. And um, I basically grew up with Boeing, so even though I'm talking just about a flight sim career, not a real world career. But I grew up with like the level D Boeing 767 and FS2 down to 4. Then um, flew the iFly 737 and then onto the PMDG aircraft when switching to prepared. Now Airsoft has released the Airbus and I, you know, I was really interested about this product. It really seemed like a nice add-on, finally a good solid Airbus add-on, uh, not too expensive, not too complex, but complex enough to simulate uh, a very nice flight. So the only Airbus experience that I have, it's very, very limited. Um, I was flying in a simulator. Um, this is about a year ago, which is kind of uh, fly and flying out there and just checking out the sim. Um, you know, other people were able to help me and assist me <laughs> trying to fly the Airbus and kind of look at its systems. Uh, there was in Delft um, uh, the ProSim simulator, an Airbus simulator. It was not a full simulator, but good enough, you know, to kind of uh, get an introduction to Airbus. But in this video, I'm gonna really try the Airbus for the very, very first time, like the actual four aircraft in the simulator, in prepared the Airbus A319 of Lufthansa. As you can see, the new Airsoft add-on for uh, Airbus Professional. So. Let's find out, again, limited experience. I'm really a Boeing man. Uh, I'm gonna try to start it up from cold and dark, try to enter some kind of, of a full flight plan and then just kind of see how it flies. We're gonna try to fly from Innsbruck, as you can see here, to Frankfurt in Germany. So let's go ahead into the cockpit and s see if I can start it up. All right, here we are in the cockpit. As you can see, it's fully uh, cold and dark. Definitely looking very nice, this new Air Aerosoft Airbus Professional. Um, now where's the on button? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, it's gonna be a complex aircraft. It's gonna be an interesting experience. Probably a lot of you guys that are already experienced with Airbus will laugh at me, at me trying to find out how this aircraft works because I'll tell you the cockpit philosophy is totally different in the Airbus compared to Boeing aircraft or similar Boeing aircraft like, like the uh, Embraer. Uh, so this is really gonna be a first time for me. So. Uh, well, of course, general layout uh, looks the same. We got uh, some piece of paper right here. That's kind of fun. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll just start with the overhead panel, right? Emergency electrical power. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna look for some sort of battery. GPEWS system, oxygen, Rolex fuel, electrics. Uh, there we go. I guess we need to be here. Uh, external power seems to be available as well. I'm just gonna move to the side a little bit. Air conditioning packs. Okay, well, you know the the terminology is kind of similar at least. Since we want to have some battery power, let's try and turn on the battery. Um, I guess that works. Oh, something's happening. Um, I'm probably doing something wrong. It's it's I think a dark cockpit philosophy like the Embraer. As you can see the mode control panel, probably it has a different name in the Airbus, but at least that comes online. Well, let's just turn on the external power since it's available. Boom. Okay. Yeah, that sounds better. So now some systems are actually starting up. I hope some displays will come alive at some point. Oh, I, I'm not sure what that sound is. Ah, there's a message on the FMC. Or what do we call this in the Airbus, the MCDU or whatever? Uh, reset IRS to NAV. Yeah, well, that makes sense, maybe. We'll set those to NAV. Probably have to enter some sort of position, I guess. Right. I'll tell you, this is... Totally different. I'm not sure what to do next. <laughs> FMG H. Atsu. Weird. Select desired system. Well, this one, I guess. IRS in it. Okay. Align IRS. Yes, please. But do I need to enter a position? So tough to figure <laughs> figure this aircraft out. This is if it's another aircraft that's kind of similar to Boeing. Usually I can find my way out, but right now, I'm not even sure how to align the IRS, IRS properly. I, I, yeah, I think I want to enter some sort of position. Last GPS position. Okay, can I click that? No. So I wanted to do this without referring to any manuals, trying to find my way out on my own. But right now I'm kind of doubting whether this will actually work. I'm not sure how to actually set this last GPS position. Ah, that looks better. 
apparently we need to actually turn on the brightness of these displays. Ah, there we go. Makes sense, in a way. Hey, there we go. Apparently we did not have to enter an IRS position, it's just aligning itself with magic. Hmm, that's different than Boeing. The main systems are on. Maybe we can turn on the APU right now. But first I need to find out if I can get put some fuel and payload in the aircraft. Now, this is the Aerosoft Airbus, it's new. So, this is really a simulation thing. But I'll try to load some fuel, whatever. Load. Okay, seems to be loaded. Now that works nice. So now we can go ahead and uh, start up the APU and then we're all gonna program the flight plan into this FMC or MCU. What's it called? <laughs> okay, so since we have fuel, um, I guess I want to turn on some fuel pumps. This one apparently goes to the APU, so I guess I'll just turn that one on. And then I should be able to start it, I guess. Maybe master switch on first and then start. Let's see if something's happening. Apparently this is the APU indication. Oh, there we go. Something start starting up. This is just the APU generator. EGT is rising, as you can see. Ah, that's nice. I think especially the flight planning, programming the MCDU, and then trying to fly the actual aircraft is going to be way different. Okay, APU generator available. So I'm not sure how automated all these systems are. Like, if the APU generator just takes over, I guess so. Unless we turn it off. But right now it is you know, dark cockpit philosophy, so the light should uh, be off. Okay, so, we got somewhere at least. <laughs> now let's try to fill in a fly plan. I've just created a very quick uh, route. I'm just gonna load that in. It kinda looks like Embraer, in a way. The Embraer FMC, but not entirely. In it, I just uh, wanna start with in it, I guess. Company route, well I've not saved any routes, so I'm just gonna have to skip on that. Alternate. Um, well, let's say Dusseldorf. I'm gonna be flying to Frankfurt. Uh, not in database. Okay. Apparently, uh, maybe some sort of setting is wrong at this stage that I need to uh, reselect. I think it's because I selected Nevergraph in the options. Let me fix that and then we'll try again. Okay, so we're gonna be. I'm not sure what the noise is, by the way. No idea. I'm gonna be flying from Innsbruck to uh, Frankfurt. So there are no routes in there apparently, well, okay, no company routes, flight number, let's say Lufthansa, whatever, 245, cost index, um, yeah, I'm just going to pick something random, 30, cruise uh, level, uh, I'm not sure, I did not prepare a full flight plan, so let's not climb too high, flight of all 340 or something, and then temperature at that level, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna put in uh, something right here, since this is just a this is just a test flight. I'm not gonna fully enter or look up all the details of a true flight plan. I first have to discover this actual aircraft. So I'm just gonna put something there. I uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, winds. Okay, we can request the winds. Not sure how that will work. If there's a link with. Um, active sky or whatever. Okay, I'm not sure how that works yet. I'm just gonna skip it for now. Tropo. I guess the tropopause height? I'm not sure. Can you alter that value? 340. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Definitely not out there on the Boeing. Around temperature? I guess just the temperature. Is it 11 degrees? No, it's 24. I assume that this is the, what you have to enter here. Again, I'm not sure exactly, but it might get a little bit thunderstormy here at Innsbruck. Uh, next page, I guess this is this. Yeah, taxi. Uh, amount of fuel, I pr presume. So fuel weight, we can just enter. Block fuel, 10.0. Oh, there we go. Fuel prediction. Oh, okay, that's, that makes sense. Okay, so we need to have 2.6 tons on board at our destination. Uh, which makes sense, kind of like the way it works with, uh, you know, what you put in in the final reserves, like if the fuel was 2.6 tons, 
and you cannot land at Frankfurt, then you have to divert to, in this case, Dusseldorf. So far, so good. I guess we want to put in a flight plan right now. Um, how does this work? <laughs> this is definitely different. Um, ah, there we go. Select a departure right here. That is convenient. Uh, runway 08 is active right here. Oh. I have to select that. Runway 08. And the Kogol 3 Juliet. It's kind of weird how these buttons align up, but okay. Alright. Insert, I guess. There we go. Yeah, seems to be okay. So yeah, that kind of looks familiar. So we're going to climb out 08, then to Rattenberg, then left to Kogol. Then we need to try to f enter the rest of the route. <laughs> it's all slowly starting to make sense. If you have some experience with an Embraer FMC, actually this does work out quite well. You know, these kind of things are just kind of switched around compared to Boeing. Kogol, like this will be next page in the Boeing and then previous page. But right here is just the other way around. This is kind of like a scroll function instead. Kogol. Uniform Mike 726 to Ernas. Now I'm, I'm gonna try this. Uniform Mike 726 to Ernas. Let's see if that works. Not in database. Well, maybe it doesn't. Can I just enter a a airway here? Uniform Mike 726 Ernas. Airways via Uniform Mike 726. I'm sure there's an easier way to enter an airway. Oh wait, 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 maybe... Okay, can we delete this entry? Um, how do we delete an entry? Ah, just a clear function. Okay, so after Kogol, we want to fly via Uniform Mic 729. If you can enter a company route, of course this would be way easier, I guess. To Ernas. Okay, can we then put in the next airway as well? Tango 161 a spot. I'm not sure, I'm just gonna try. To a spot. Yeah, that seems to work. Oh, a spot with an uh, A. A spot. Yeah, hey, that seems to work. So we're almost there. What I want to insert right now is then an arrival at Frankfurt. I first have to select the ILS, I guess. ILS Sulu 25 left. It is indeed the Aspa 3 Whiskey. Approach Fias. Um, I think Delta Foxtrot 616. It's gonna hit insert. And I think this is kind of correct. Okay, so that's a flight plan inserted. Now we need to look at performance. Yeah, there we go. Um, bad format. Okay, but performance. Okay, transition altitude, we can put that in. Transition altitude is indeed 10,000. Takeoff shift. Okay, I'm really not sure what to enter here. Flaps. Uh, how about the flaps on this aircraft? On this aircraft, of course, the flap handle is weird. You don't have degrees, so it's either... I guess we'll just take off with flaps one. Hope that's safe for this. Sh safe enough for this short runway. Ah, there we got some V-speeds. We can do flex temperature, well, maybe not for this runway. Flex, from what I understand, is kind of like a derated thrust stuff. Um, but I guess this is okay. So V1130, rotate 136, V2140. Uh, I'm not sure if I can set a V speed, probably not. QNH, that's a good one. So I kind of presume now that the flight plan has been entered relatively correctly. Um, of course, I cannot be fully sure. But I tried my best. I think I just want to start up the engines at the gate because I'm not sure how the engine start procedure works exactly. So I am going to call up the pushback truck. Maybe it doesn't work uh, with GSX yet actually. So then, then I'll just push back myself and then start the engines right here. But how? Dude, want to turn on the fuel pumps, I guess. Also for the APU, was not turned on yet. So let's turn them all on. I'm not sure about the fuel situation. I guess with this display, we can take a look better look at all the systems. Yeah, there we go. So we don't have any fuel in the center tanks 
from what it looks like. So I'll just turn them off. I'm gonna turn the beacon lights on. Now I assume that we don't have to turn the packs off. APU bleed may need to be turned on though. Engine one bleeds that will just take over. Yeah, now we got some air in the cabin. Now how to start the engines? Um, from what I remember from my few hours of sim time, you can just start the engines right here, but I'm not sure. Let's try it. Engine number two. Let's see if anything wants to happen. Um, not sure about that. Oh, ignition start. Wait, let's put that back. Normal, no, ignition. We want ignition, right? So if we put it then to master two. Oh, something's happening. And I hope now everything magically goes on its own. <laughs> hey, the engine is just starting. It ain't that easy. Well, nice. Let's do the same for engine number one. So far, I don't think I've broken the aircraft. Now, by the way, I have to say, if you're looking into getting the Air Airsoft Airbus Professional, I, I do think it's a very good aircraft already from the initial experience. I'm just going to check the overhead panel, make sure every light is off. Um, I guess we don't need external power anymore. Generate seems to have taken over. APU bleed can be turned off, I guess. Anti-ice will not be required. Let me see if we can do a flight control check of some sort. Status. No, APU, bleed system, conditions, doors are all closed, at least. The wheels, nice, hydraulics, there we go. Um, well, weather seems to work. Aileron as well, nice. Fuel, recall. Oh, yeah, I know, that's alright, cancel. Now, how do I cancel this? Okay, maybe I just need to put the flaps to one. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna push back using the default pushback function of prepared for now. And then I'll taxi to the runway. And I'll try to take off the aircraft. See how it behaves. I know that the throttle was very weird. I do want to make sure that I turn on some sort of weather radar. Predictive wind shear off. And then NW STRG dis disconnect. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Probably normally work some checklists and all that stuff. But uh, again, this is just going to be a video to try this out to the best of my ability without using any manuals or whatever. I think I want to turn on some sort of fly director. I'm not sure what Lima Shara means. Oh, I think that's something for the ILS. Normally would arm an auto throttle. But again, I'm not sure how it works on this Air Airbus. What else have we got up here? Heading, okay. Well, I think I just want to arm the auto thrust and I'm looking for some sort of nav mode so we some sort of LNAV, VNAV, whatever um, meantime I do see auto brakes is there some sort of RTO function? take off, auto brakes should be set to max oh this helps, this sort of checklist didn't notice that yet cabin is checked, spoilers armed flaps for takeoff takeoff config normal, nice I do want to display the terrain, but I'm still not sure whether there's some sort of nav mode. Maybe... Maybe that's just this. Nav, ah, there you go. Yeah. Sort of makes sense, so this is manual. If you pull it, it's manual, and then push it, that's nav. Okay, how about takeoff config now? Takeoff config seems to be okay. There we go, guys. <laughs> At least we started up. Let's see how this Airbus taxis and flies. Um want to turn on the taxi lights um, nose to taxi okay can't seem to be able to disengage the parking brake by pushing my brakes on the rudder pedal so I'll just turn it off like that I push the throttles forward again I'm not sure how this actually works can we move oh, we're slowly moving yeah Took a while for the engines to respond. Ooh, it's going pretty quick. Ah, nice. Look at that scenery. Isn't that beautiful? It's okay, we've got the ground speed right here, so reading 21 knots, 22. Hmm, so far, so good. 
but so far I'm definitely enjoying the experience with the Airbus in general. Very nice. Okay, strobe lights, runway turn off, strobe. Approaching zero, eight. Yep, as you can hear, it also has RAS. Seems to keep a very nice taxi speed. Although I'm kind of racing around right now. As you can see, the throttles are all the way to idle, but it just seems to be able to do very well on just this um, thrust setting. Okay, take it easy. Definitely behaves like kind of a small jet aircraft. Alright, now, takeoff config should be okay. I'm not sure about takeoff trim. When I push the trim button, something very weird happens. I guess it's just an auto trim. Um, I'm not sure if there's a toga button. <laughs> I guess if you just push forward on the uh, on the throttles, it will just go into some sort of takeoff mode. Yeah, toga. Yeah, there you go. Toga. Okay, so it should do that all automatically. Altitude is armed. Climb or optimum climb, OP climb. Not sure what the differences are. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna push the throttles forward, see what happens. Brakes released. Well, maybe I'm just gonna spool up the engines first. Zero, not sure. Zero, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm not sure why the engines take so long to respond. I'm just gonna spool them up, release the brakes, and then full power. Or at least Toga. Manual Toga. Okay. Um, engines are spooling up more than I anticipated. Probably did something wrong with the thrust flex stuff. But hey, we're rolling. Okay. That one means the V1, I guess, and then that little circle means rotate. There we go. Oop. Let's take it easy. There we go. Lost the rate gear up. Just flies itself. <laughs> sort of. Okay, I am pushing it down. Okay, it definitely feels a lot different. I have to make a lot less corrections, it feels like. Behaves very nicely. Wow. Okay, we are in NAV right now. Optimum climb. Not sure what this manual... Oh, lever to climb. Okay. How do we do that? Like that? Or CL, climb. Probably. Uh, trust climb. At least it tells you what to do. <laughs> In case you forget. Oh dear. We got a master warning. Speed. Oh yeah. That makes sense actually. I'm just over speeding already. Apparently need to climb a lot faster than that. I uh, need to put the flaps up as well of course. You tend to forget things when you're busy studying a new aircraft. <laughs> okay, so really, w just where you put the nose, it will just stay there. And it's very easy to hand fly, I have to be honest. You want to climb to 340. Oh, it's bumpy. Whoa, what's happening? Okay, I'm still not sure exactly how this aircraft manages its speed. I guess we just want to stay on the pink or magenta triangle right there. Okay, just want to maintain the speed. Still flying manually. Well, sort of. <laughs> I think any Boeing pilot would not really agree this is manual flight. <laughs> it's kind of it has a weird behavior in turbulence. I'm not sure if this is normal. As a Boeing pilot, I would want to correct for this right now, but I'm not sure what to do in the Airbus. Okay, let me turn on the automation. There we go. Autopilot 1. Well, so far a good experience with uh, taking off the Airbus. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Always nice to depart out of Innsbruck, of course. We're going to enter a sharp turn, so let's see how it, how it will do on the departure. Oh, look at that cloud. Isn't that beautiful? 
Now, since this is a new product, uh, let me share some screens from the outside. So you can see, they did a really good job on the exterior of the airplane. Looks very nice. Okay, so we are reaching now our cruise altitude very shortly. I presume what is on the navigation display here, this blue arrow, is something like um, like the top of climb, but I'm not sure. So far, so good. I'm not sure what to do with the thrust because it's now in climb mode. I'm not sure whether to put it somewhere lower or whatever. Now the indications are definitely different and that's if you're used to Boeing aircraft it's just different like for example this the, the the green diamond kind of shows your your track and then the yellow uh, is your heading so the heading is up in this case usually in a Boeing aircraft I configured it in such a way that the track is actually up instead of the heading uh, so that's definitely different also just uh, different names of the flight modes like nav uh, climb I'm not sure yet you know I have to read the manual <laughs> to really understand all the different modes on the Airbus, but in a way it makes sense. And I, I, you know, maybe if you're, you know, maybe it's easier to understand for new pilots in some way. Um, but I guess just, oh wow, what just happened? Did my, ooh, my table, I don't have that in the Boeing, definitely not. <laughs> but maybe Airbus m is easier to understand for people who are new to aviation somehow. The aircraft, from what I just saw, it kind of tells you what to do, which is very nice. Oh, in that case, I can uh, <sighs> stretch my legs, put the coffee on my tray table in front of me, <laughs> and let the aircraft fly in a cruise face. Nice. Can't do that in a Boeing. All right, so we're almost already reaching the phase where we need to start the descent. As you can see in the flight plan, after a Retney, after Golmo, we already have to start the descent to. Uh, into Frankfurt. I guess the ILS is already tuned with the right course, so that should be okay. Now, I did see a sort of a top of descent symbol right here. Not seeing it right now because I pushed the altitude button or pulled the altitude button. Um, I guess I need to select a lower altitude as well. I'm not sure if it's going to descend on its own right now. Pretty good. Oh no, I don't. I should not do that. Descent? Really? Optimal descent. Alright, it's already started descending. Okay. Auto throttle. Should I put it to idle? No. Auto flight. Should it should be in the auto flight range, I guess. Oh, it just needs to be in climb mode. See in Redney there is some sort of point right there. I'm not sure what those blue arrows mean on the navigation display. That's to me to me that they they don't make any sense. I guess this is actually the FM, FMS mode that follows the sort of the VNAV profile. You know what? I might just kind of turn into a dusk setting to kind of show off the lights of the cockpit of this aircraft uh, since it's a new add on to the flight simulator market and to see kind of if I can still find my way uh, <laughs> flying this aircraft in the dark. Okay, again, I'm not sure what all these indications on the speed tape mean. Triangle angle is again just probably the selected speed and then maybe just the range it in which it just leaves the throttles or something. Not sure. Now let's see if we can turn on some cockpit lights. That would be nice. I think some of them actually turn on by themselves. Whoa, what happened? What's happening? Oh this is not good. I'm not sure what's happening here. Maybe this is something that the Aerosoft team has to fix. <laughs> Alright, seems to have stabilized again. I was looking for the cockpit lights. Um, where are they? Overhead lights? Oh yeah, there you go. Looking good. Flood lights. This panel. Oh, that looks very nice indeed. And then the integral lights. Oh, as you can see. The aircraft is performing very well during the approach. I mean, even after flying Boeing for many years, this this feels relatively comfortable. Um, of course, there are some automation systems that are way different that I need to get used to. Um, and I'm probably making a lot of mistakes in the eyes of the true Airbus guys out there. So I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, uh, I think we're meeting a restriction right here. 
level 110. Oh, no, it's descending further. I think I will switch to a more manual type of uh, automation. So I don't have to fly this entire transition. But uh, yeah, I feel happy about it. Um, I already get to say I might just try to fly more Airbus uh, soon in the future. Because yes, it's totally different. Yes, the philosophy is different. I might not always agree with the philosophy. But that's all based on flights, uh, flight simmer's perspective. Of course, I'm not a real world pilot, so I cannot tell for sure. But um, it's a nice aircraft to explore, definitely. So we'll definitely want to fly and fly more flights with this airplane. Final objective of this video, try and land, come to a full stop. I've set the auto brakes to uh, medium, well, maybe low as a, well, let's do medium. Uh, the brake fan, I think I've heard about that, that you need to turn it on like after landing or something. Makes a very characteristic noise. Um, other than that, I think we should be okay for landing. ILS should be tuned automatically. I'm just gonna factor myself around to kind of play around with the manual heading modes or autopilot mode, see if that works out. Now, initially, I was not always a fan of the Airbus cockpit because I thought it looked kind of, you know, grey and dull. And um, but I have to say, at night, it looks pretty good. Not sure about daylight, I think Boeing still wins there for me, personally, but at night, all those lights, definitely the different colors as well, uh, look pretty nice. I'm making the turn to fly the transition, and then we should be arriving in Frankfurt shortly, hopefully. Well, let's say we receive an instruction now to fly heading 070. Oh, no, heading 070. Okay, that works, I just pulled out. Yeah, definitely different than the Boeing, but it works. And does the, oh, okay. It immediately goes into manual mode for all the different. It cannot, I think there's something like optimum descent, sort of sort of a level, flight level change, I guess, but it cannot. In the Boeing, if you select a heading, it could technically still fly on VNAV. But apparently on this aircraft that's not possible. That's quite interesting. I will just descend to 5,000 feet. I'm waiting for some ILS signals. But I guess I have to click this knob. So there it is. Nice. So I'm just going to kind of factor myself around. What I also want to try is fly in direct. Now from the Embraer I know that replacing a waypoint with a waypoint up here destroys the fly plan. So I'm not sure if that works here. So let's say we want to direct to Delta Foxtrot 613, we'll just select that one. And insert. Ah, okay, that works. And then we could... Oh, huh? It goes into nav mode immediately. No, I want to fly heading. Well, this is definitely different. Because <laughs> in the Boeing, you know, if you get a heading or uh, you get factors in general, you kind of want to update your LNAV route to make sure that, you know, your VNAV calculations are kind of so you can use those VNAV calculations and LNAV calculations as a reference. But here, it just goes back into NAV mode on its own. It's kind of interesting. But again, I just, I might be messing something up. <laughs> Since this, this is the first time I'm flying the Airbus. Maintaining 5000, as you can see, I should probably reduce the speed. So let's reduce the speed to 180. And I'm not sure when I need to put down flaps. I'm still in auto throttle. I'm guessing the green circle right here means like flaps 1 or something. Okay, I'm not receiving the ILS signal anymore. I guess I flew too far away, so I'm just gonna... Head heading uh, 280. Hopefully I can pick up the localizer. At least, yeah, localizer is there. I can arm the approach modes. Yeah, glide slope localizer. Uh, that's similar to, bo to Boeing at least. Speed 180. I'm not sure what this S means right here. That localizer seems to be captured. So far, so good. See the airport already. There is a glide slope indication. So just fly 180 knots until the glide slope is captured. And then we'll use, reduce the 160. Oh, I'm thinking about V speeds and all that. We might want to find out how we can select a. Ah. I, I forgot to fill in some f information right here. I don't know, oh, and V approach, 133. So I guess final speed will be 138, giving a standard correction, or no. Maybe it already contains the correction. 
So I guess this is just the final approach speed. One three three. Let's find out. Really like the atmosphere of those floodlights in the cockpit. Okay. Now again, I'm not sure what to do with the auto or with the throttle. How to move it? <laughs> I have no idea. Probably just should keep it in this range or something. It will just do its own thing. I guess I don't have to touch it. Okay, it starts descending. Let's reduce speed to 160. So, my first Airbus A319 landing in prepared um, after flying Boeing for many, many years. <laughs> but it should be okay. I don't think it will be uh, that much of a problem. I'm just, I'm just not sure what to do with this auto throttle. Okay, well. Uh, let's put the gear down. I'm really not sure about the gear and flaps configurations But given we have Two more positions of flaps. Let's do gear down flaps 3 Again, I did not read any manual so don't uh, bash me for this 2500. <laughs> 2500. Oh, the GPWS voice is definitely different. Kind of nice. Still the aircraft is flying on its own I am gonna disconnect the automation shortly. You know what? Let's do that right now. I'm just gonna use no, I cannot use that knob. In that case, I'll just push the autopilot button. There we go. That's different. <laughs> different sound. Kind of like that sound, though. Okay, I'm flying manually. What happens if I move the thrust lever? I'm going to reduce speed 133. And let's do full flaps. I really no idea what I have to do with this thing. Aircraft slowing down, speed brakes, I guess it's sort of armed. Now it's sort of armed, I guess. Okay, the aircraft still basically just flies itself to my... F oh, the autopilot is connected. Oh. Now I'm flying myself. There we go. Gear is down, speed brake is armed, and just start switches continuous, no? <laughs> Won't be necessary on this one. What if I disengage this one? Oh yeah, now I do have manual control of the throttle. But I'm not sure if that's supposed to be done. It definitely reacts very quickly to joystick inputs. Let's keep the auto throttle on. Auto thrust, I guess it's, it's called. Uh, shall we do turn the landing lights on this time? There we go. Well, wish me luck. <laughs> there we go. It feels quite interesting. I'm not sure if I have to do the retard thing with the auto throttle enabled, auto thrust. It's very stable though, you can really feel that the aircraft kind of gives inputs on its own. Very interesting. Um, okay. Flight slope. Yeah. Oh. 40, 30, retard, 10, retard. There we go. Now, I've not enabled any reverses or set a reverse axis, so I'm just gonna break the aircraft and come to a stop. Well, it worked. <laughs> We've safely arrived at Frankfurt for the first time flying the Airbus A319. Well, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> I'll just vacate and then come to a full stop. So there you have it. That's me trying the Airbus for the first time as a real Boeing fan. Um, I got to say, this was a good experience. Um, definitely a lot different, but it's easy. You know, if you have experience with Boeing aircraft in the flight sim, then you know, it's not that hard to get to know this aircraft uh, without even reading a manual like I just did right now. Uh, but there are some, you know, quirks about this aircraft that if you're flying it for the first time, it will be very confusing. Especially the auto throttle system, to me, is very confusing. You know, you, as a Boeing pilot, you just want to have manual control of the auto, um, you know, of the thrust of the throttles, you know, very easily. It's very clear in Boeing aircraft when the automation is off versus when the automation is on and in this aircraft it's not that clear to me you know uh, it's just of a different philosophy which one is better again I cannot judge 
I'm not a real world pilot. To me, flying the Boeing seems more of an interesting experience because it uh, involves more manual flights, especially at 737, which is kind of the counterpart of this Airbus A319-320 series. But it's interesting. And, you know, leave a comment down below what you think of this experience. Uh, if you have flown the Airbus or maybe you're an Airbus fan and have to try Boeing still for the first time, let me know. Um, I would, I'd be interested to hear your stories. Uh, let's keep it civilized in the comments though. I mean, Airbus versus Boeing is always a big discussion, like prepared versus explain. Um, but again, you know, they both have their pros and cons, I think. And I definitely want to learn more about this aircraft in the future. And I'd love to take you along with me on that journey as I try Airbus on the Aviation Pro channel here on YouTube. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked this video, make sure to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash aviationpro if you'd like to help me make more of these videos in the future, especially featuring the Airbus now. Uh, your support would be very much appreciated and can help um, me running the channel in the future. And um, yeah, make sure you like and share this video. That also helps a lot. I'm definitely sure that a lot of people will be interested to see how a Boeing <laughs> fan tries to handle an Airbus for the first time. So. I'd like to thank you for watching uh, for now, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.